Welcome to Information Service Engineering. This is lecture number four, Natural Language Processing, part three. Now we are going to talk about tokenization as one of the basic techniques in any NLP pipeline. So what is tokenization? Tokenization is the process of breaking a stream of text up into words, phrases, symbols, or other meaningful elements. So we distinguish usually between word tokenization, where we want to have the single words, and sentence tokenization, where we want to have a single sentence broken out of a natural language text. So at first glance in English, so English word tokenization might seem simple, but you will see the devil is, as you always say, in the details. Okay, let's have a look. We have an example for you here. Latest figures from the US government show the trade deficit with China reached an all-time high of $365.7 billion, which corresponds to 250.1 billion British pounds last year. By February this year, it had already reached 57 billion US dollars. Okay, now let's try to do tokenization. How could you do that? we know already a rather helpful tool, which is, yeah, we can simply make use of the white spaces and simply look of all of the white spaces with the help of a regular expression. To do that, it's quite easy. So I have here an example for you, which is a rather nice and simple regular expression doing exactly the following. First of all, with a capital W and a star, I look for anything non-alphanumeric so like for example a period or an exclamation mark or a question mark something like that and then after that i look for yeah this might be followed by white spaces and of course i want also to remove exactly the white spaces or note the white spaces you can do this Already in the last lectures, I showed you this nice tool, the RecExer, and I also want to skip over to the RecExer tool here in um, our lecture. I have already prepared exactly this example for you, and you see here exactly the text that we had, and I have here exactly the regular expression that I already have told you, and you see here marked in blue are here for example the white spaces or we have here a period and a white space and so on so this already looks quite nice however do we have now separated all of the words what do you think so probably down here you have a better look at the words but look at words like this one is this really a word if we really want to do tokenization we want to separate, of course, the dollar sign from the number and probably also the number from the billion. So this didn't work as well as we expected it to work. So what can we do? The intended result that you see here, not only here the billions and the dollars and the uh, dollar sign and the pound sign, but also, for example, um, what we also have here, the all time, which was uh, two words connected by a dash was also not separated, but we want to separate it, of course. So it's more difficult than you might think. Issues in tokenization are usually the separators if you look at the punctuations. So exceptions to the punctuation are when they are not separators, like for example, in acronyms like MPH or PhD or there are, for example, these um, apostrophes. If we are abbreviating we are to we are, so the expansion of we are to we are. Uh, and we want, of course, if we want to separate these two things, we do not want to have we and re. We want really to have the two words we are. Or if you have multi-word expressions, New York, it's one term. It, it's not two words, it's one word because it has one specific meaning, New York. New itself has another meaning. York itself also has another meaning. But New York, it's a two-word expression. And of course, this should be recognized as such. If it comes to numbers, it's even more difficult. So for example, you have so many ways to write dates in different kind of formats. Also, um, if you look at 
historic dates like for example 55 BC or 55 BCE or AD IP addresses also require punctuation but of course this is not a separator in that sense between words of phone numbers also have other kind of separators in there so you see there are lots of exceptions that we usually would have to take care of and if you think now in english it's already difficult then look at other kind of languages where you don't use a space character to separate words from each other so for example um, in chinese what you have there or in japanese you delimit usually only your sentences but not your words and you know there's the signs simply follow each other and you don't have necessarily in between also spaces and there what you have to do is word segmentation so this is also doc uh, tokenization but you try to separate the morphemes which means this is tokenization for languages without the space character and as i already told you chinese japanese sentences are not usually connected to to word delimiters as well as in Thai and Lao, also phrases and sentences, but not words are delimited. And in Vietnamese, it's quite the, way, the other way around. So their syllables and not words are delimited. And we have to find out what is a word consisting of one, two, three, four, or how many syllables. But let's first face on sentence splitting. Sentence splitting should, should be easy. So we want to divide a string of written language into its component sentences. So this means in English, or also in some other languages, we are using punctuation, particularly full stop, period character, um, like for example, question mark, exclamation mark. If you try to look for that, you already have a reasonable ap approximation, but it's not necessarily 100% uh, correct because this is a non-trivial problem since in English, the full stop character also is used as we have already seen for abbreviations on numbers like in Mr. or in 4.5 or something like that. However, a vanilla algorithm, so a vanilla baseline approach would look like the following thing. If it's a period, it ends a sentence. If the preceding token is in the hand compiled list of abbreviations like Mr. or PhD, then it doesn't end a sentence. And if the next token after the you know, the period is capitalized, then it really ends a sentence. If you're using this kind of um, vanilla approach, then you are capable of detecting about approximately 95% of all sentence boundaries in English correctly, but only 95%. So this is an approach that can be implemented via regular expressions plus some rules. So Alternative approaches then also are based on regular expressions to determine exactly, you know, what kind of, uh, um, let's say, punctuation should be recognized as such or not. And of course, you can also use machine learning to learn or train a binary classifier that decides whether a certain punctuation is part of a word, like in Mr. or PhD, or if it's not the end of a word if it's the end of a sentence and usually then by machine learning techniques you are able also to achieve um, an accuracy that is above 95 percent in that case okay this was only a tiny peek into tokenization that you know in principle how it works so you know already with regular expressions we have a powerful tool that is already capable of achieving something there also for uh, splitting up sentences or splitting up natural language text. The next thing we want to learn about language is the so-called statistical language model. So you will see that many of the tasks and many of the peculiarities of language can be captured and by, by statistics. So what we do is we try to create a statistical model of the language in the sense that we know, you know, or we try to approximate how likely is it that after a specific word, another word will follow, which then in the end gives us also some statistical uh, ideas about how sentences are constructed and formed, and also sometimes what they mean. And since all of that is an approximation and we cannot look at, you know, 
huge or let's say uh, long sequences of characters we try to approximate that by looking at the probabilities of small fractions of sentences and these are the so-called n grams so one gram would be one word two gram two words three gram three words and then we look at the probabilities of the likelihood that these combinations of one two three four five grams would occur and this we are going to do in the next section of the lecture